Hello and a very warm welcome to Rising Stars. I'm Vikram Oza. Now, there are many ways of living the good life. Some like to kick up their feet and chill at a spa. Others like to take the road less travelled in an SUV perhaps or perhaps a bike. And for the for them, there are a host of companies out there. Many of them are startups who make it all happen. The logistics, the bikes, uh, the SUVs, whatever you're looking for, the gear as well. All of it is taken care of. In fact, Enfield Riders is one such adventure lifestyle startup that gets those uh, looking for adventure in India, Southeast Asia, the subcontinent on these uh, motorcycle expeditions and four-wheel drive road trips. Uh, the co-founder of the company, Baljeet Gujral, is with us in the studio to tell us more about the business and the lifestyle. So, Baljeet, great to have you with us. Same here. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Where did the lifestyle element really kick in that you wanted to turn it into a business? Uh, well, it it was it started as a passion. Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, a Swiss banker. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so I was a banker for close to about eight years. Yes. And uh, me and my wife, we used to take a lot of these road trips by ourselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, we used to fly to different cities, find friends there. Uh, pick up a motorcycle from them, uh, go to destinations which were uncharted, uh, more or less travelled. Yes. Uh, and then come back to the city, drop the bikes and fly out. And we actually became our first clients. It came more of as a need. Yes. Uh, we wanted someone who can provide a one-stop shop for people like us mm -hmm. uh, with motorcycles, with riding gears, uh, giving us uh, ideas about where to travel. Right. Uh, and, we, and the logistics need to be taken of care of. And we found this as an opportunity and we started Enfield Riders in 2012. Mm. So, 2012 is a long time ago. Yeah, six um, years now. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, and you're still calling yourself a startup. Why is that? Of course, I, I think uh, the adventure segment in India is still building up. Uh, there's a long way to go. Uh, unlike uh, the West, in Europe, in US, uh, it's at another level altogether. Yes. But, but how when, far has the business come so far? Because quite having far. started... Yes, it has, hasn't it? So six years you ago... You started off as a bike rental company, yes, no? Yes. yes. Six years ago when we started, uh, uh, people questioned us that, you know, would this kind of business be actually making sense? Because mm -hmm. you can rent out a car for as less as about 1500 a day, yes. whereas a bike rental is about 1800 a day. <laughs> so it's, it's more for adventure rather than local commute. Right. So, so we were, we were very clear with this that it has to be for people who want to have an experience, mm -hmm. uh, want to have an adventure rather than just look it for a local commute. Which is fantastic. But turning it to a business model, something that is viable and something that works over a period of time, right. it had to grow from being a bike rental company. So Absolutely. how did you uh, expand the model and at which points in your six-year history? I think uh, what worked best for us was that we were in a supply-demand market. Uh, we didn't anticipate that we'll build the business this way. Uh, when we started, it was purely a motorcycle rental company. We started getting clients who came and said, okay, now we have taken a bike rental from you. Can you recommend us where to go? Can you, I mean, like if you're around Bombay, we don't want to go to a typical Lunavla or Alibag where, yeah. you know, the rest of the Bombay is over the weekends. Correct. So can you recommend places which are more unexplored? More adventurous for them. Exactly. And that's when the weekend trips model came into picture. And we started organizing weekend trips where we rented out bikes to them. People could also bring in their own bikes, rent out riding gear from us. Uh, we did a weekend getaway idea for them. Slowly, those same clients started coming to us and said, what next? Can we do more adventure? Can we do a five-day, seven-day trip to Goa, Rajasthan? Uh, we would like to explore Himalayas. Can we do Ladakh? Can we yeah. do Spiti? And that's when the motorcycle tours came into picture. Sure. Uh, more and more people came with their families and then the families had a need that, okay, we cannot be on the bikes all the time. It's adventure, it's fun, yeah. but not for a 10-day trip. And then Not the, with the kids along. Exactly. And that's when the SUV tours kicked in, ah. wherein we said, okay, people who would like to be on a motorcycle, whether men, women, they can ride the bikes. And their family members, kids, they would want to accompany them on the adventure trip. Mm -hmm. Why not join in the SUV. So right. there were self-drive SUVs as well as chauffeur-driven. What are your total revenues right now? Yeah, How so is we, it working on an We have five basis? major verticals. Uh, yeah. The first vertical is the motorcycle touring, which is uh, yeah, the key business. Yeah. The SUV touring, uh, adventure touring segment. The second is uh, motorcycle rentals, uh, mm -hmm. which contribute close to about 15% to the business. Right. But you only have Royal Enfields, right? Yes. Uh, there are about 30 Royal yes, Enfields we, in we, your fleet. We have company-owned 30 Royal Enfields. We're in the process of now raising funds. Uh, hopefully, the fleet is going to touch 100 by end of 2018. Right. And uh, uh, motorcycle rentals contribute to a big segment purely because we are focusing on adventure, right. not on local So computing. you source them from elsewhere too? Absolutely. Uh, depending so on uh, if the you need. would want to ride a KTM, 
medium if you would want to ride a triumph tiger mm -hmm. there are pure motorcycle rental companies who do into the luxury segment yes. we sublease it from them and i also understand you do a lot of coaching because people aspire to the kind of <laughs> lifestyle that you are out to the so, out so, to sell so coaching actually again uh, purely came as a demand right. uh, when a lot of guys started coming on the trips with their families uh, women wanted to ride motorcycles as well and mm -hmm. we looked at it as an opportunity and we said why not set up a motorcycle coaching academy for women and men right. where they can come learn how to ride a bike and then join us on the trips. That's fantastic. Yeah, so that contributes close to about 15% of the business. Uh -huh. So between these three verticals which is adventure touring, motorcycle coaching academy and motorcycle rentals, that's where close to about 90% of the business is. At the last 10%, how much 10%, we have a dedicated customization division where we build motorcycles. It's huh? called uh, Metal Craft Customs. Nice. So people can bring any of those bikes uh, they have, which is Royal Enfields or a Triumph or a Harley or and a remodel Ducati, it. and remodel it. And, uh, you know, right from basics like just putting performance parts yes. or maybe even doing a complete... Uh, change to the paint jobs. Sure. So that contributes That's a to high margin business, I would imagine. Absolutely. So yeah. we just started that two years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, it started with just contributing about 2 to 3% and in less than two years, it's contributing 10% of the revenue to the company. So what's the way forward then? Uh, because uh, you brought in about 20 lakhs and that was your own money when you started. Yes. Uh, but over a period of time, you kind of uh, was, were able to raise about 65 odd lakhs? Yes. So the first tranche that we raised about two years ago was $100,000. Mm -hmm. uh, we are in the process of closing our second round now. Uh, close to about $1.5 million would be pumped in the company. Right. Which will be purely used for expanding across geographies. Right. Because right now, our presence in India is in Bombay, Bangalore and Delhi. Mm -hmm. uh, we are expanding it to other locations because primarily our Southeast Asia tours and Indian subcontinent tours are contributing a very high revenue. So right now they are subleased. Uh, we will be having our uh, own units there. So in Bhutan, Sri Lanka, Nepal, as well as in Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos. That's fantastic. Uh also, uh, by way of the business and the way you've uh, kind of structured it over a period of time, yeah. uh, it would be a prime candidate uh, for a sale because you've been in the business uh, long <laughs> enough. Uh, do you think that that could be a possibility you would be playing with in your head? Uh, because as adventure Absolutely. grows in the country, uh, there are a lot of auto players yeah. uh, who would be very interested in the kind of uh, business uh, model that you've got going for yourself. Well, to be honest with you, uh, we have had offers in the past uh, for a buyout. But I see that there is a huge potential in the adventure segment as of now. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, uh, the next five to seven years in India, this segment will uh, grow much larger than it is right now. Mm -hmm. So I purely think that it's a time to scale rather than to sell and move out. So yes, uh, if we get the right partners who would come and want to partner with us to expand this and take it to the next level, we'll be more than happy but not to sell out at the moment. No, not at this moment, no. <laughs> uh, which is uh, a story in itself because it's about passion, something that you Absolutely. got into it uh, for in the first place. And yes. now that it's a successful business, you'd like to see it grow even True. further. True. Such a pleasure having you on Rising Stars, Virgil, and all the very best uh, for the future as well. Thank you so much. And indeed, there'll be many more entrepreneurs on Rising Stars. Thanks for joining us.